Hey everyone, this is Dylan at Salty Underground, and today we're going to be talking about Brea nudibranch. We as saltwater aquarium hobbyists, we take painstaking hours to pick out everything that we want to put in our tank to make it look the best that it can. But Aptasia anemone is something that can really throw off the visual balance of your tank and poses a real issue to aquarium owners. So let's talk a little bit about what Aptasia anemone is and why it's not so good for our tanks. So Aptasia anemone actually means beautiful. As aquarium owners, we, we definitely don't think Aptasia is beautiful. It ruins the look and feel of the aquarium and it can really be a major pest for aquarium owners. They are invasive and aggressive competitors. They reproduce sexually and asexually, so that means that they can reproduce extremely quickly and before you know it, you'll have your entire tank overrun by Aptasia. One of the problems that makes Aptasia such a big issue and hard to manage is that they eat the same food that your fish eat. So when you're feeding your fish and there are some leftover stuff that the fish might not eat, it's going straight to the Aptasia and that really can cause them to grow quite a bit and have adverse effects for your aquarium. There are a ton of methods to getting rid of Aptasia in your tank and they don't always all work. Let's talk a little bit about the different methods and why they don't really work all that well. So one of them is any of the quick fix chemical solutions to Aptasia control. These are chemicals that you're going to be introducing into your aquarium. They might kill the Aptasia, but it could lead to other issues in your tank and with your other corals and throw off the whole entire balance of the, the tank. And that can be a real issue. There's also several natural predators for Aptasia anemone. So one of them is the peppermint shrimp, which is a very popular choice to try to get rid of Aptasia. And then we also have the copper band butterfly fish, as well as the file fish. These are all predators for the Aptasia anemone that you can get for your tank. There are a couple issues with these types of predators. So we here at Salty Underground recommend that if you have an Aptasia issue and you have any kind of hesitation about using any of these other methods, that you take a look into using Buria Nudibranch as your method of Aptasia control. So Buria Nudibranch is a sea slug that only eats Aptasia. That's the only thing in their diet. If you have Bergia and there are no more Aptasia left, they will starve to death. So you definitely know that they're not eating anything else that you might be putting in your tank to feed your other fish. Here's some of the other characteristics and benefits of the Bergia that you may add into your tank. They add a very little bio load to your reef, so you don't have to worry about any of that. They are nocturnal, so you likely won't see them out during the day. And if you do see them out, it's probably because they are out looking for food. They can eat every single last part of the Aptasia anemone, and they have a special mechanism which they do it. And that means that it will not sense that it's being eaten and have a defense response, which could lead to another outbreak of Aptasia anemone. It's really good for what we as saltwater aquarium hobbyists would need. And one of the other good things is that they can reproduce pretty quickly. So that means that as the eggs are hatching, that's adding to the troops that are going to be taking out your Aptasia anemone infestation. 
So here's what you can expect if you were to order some Bergia Nudibranch. We recommend that you have at least eight Bergia per 100 gallon tank, and if you have about 50 to 100 Aptasia anemone. And at that rate, you'll have about a two to three month period before you start to see that your Aptasia infestation is pretty much under control and pretty much gone away. I mentioned earlier that the Bergia Nuda branch can reproduce pretty quickly and they can, they are able to reproduce and in four to six weeks you'll be able to see the baby Bergia with the naked eye. There are some things that you need to be mindful of if you are wanting to introduce Bergia to your tank for aptasia control. They do have some natural predators that are associated with reef tanks. So they might not be the best fit if you have these predators. So wrasses, butterfly fish, file fish, and some dotty backs are all natural predators of Bergia. So they might actually end up eating your Bergia if you were to introduce them into a tank that had these fish in it. Shrimp that scavenge at night it could also become an issue for the Bergia, as well as aggressive crabs that scavenge at night as well. So you definitely have to keep these kind of things in mind when you are deciding whether or not you want to include Bergia into your tank for Aptasia control. But that is it for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed and I hope that you guys learned a little bit about the Bergia Neuter branch and why they are really one of the top tier solutions for Aptasia control with saltwater aquarium hobbyists.